heathens and welcome to my channel. I am Beauty Heathen and my channel is dedicated to the exploration of paganism through the medium of cosmetics. If you enjoy this subject matter or find my content of interest, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and set the bell to all to be notified of when I upload new videos. In today's episode, we will be discussing the subject of the Mesopotamian god Ninurta. This one is likely going to be on the shorter sides, so you shouldn't need to grab a snack and <laughs> settle in for a long video. Um, I didn't want to delve into too much information about this deity, mainly because tomorrow's video is going to talk more about Sumatran theology. And because of that, um, I didn't want to delve into a lot of complicated and potentially confusing information on this subject, so yeah, this one is going to be kept pretty brief. As always, if you are tuning in for the first time, I use cosmetic practice heads in recognition of um, trying to maintain cultural sensitivity. Mesopotamia and Sumeria was around the Middle East area. Um, so of course you would have expected to see deeper skin tones in that area. And the head has been sprayed with hairspray. I used the LA Girl Pro Coverage HD foundation in the color toast at least until I run out of it the eyes have been prepped with the NYX professional makeup eye primer in the color white and then everything has been set with the Becca Hydra Mist setting powder which I got in my boxy charm everything else has been purchased um, on its own from Ulta, or I think I got the NYX eyeshadow base on Amazon. Um, but yeah, that's the base. And as always, do not rely upon my videos as to how cosmetics will react and perform on normal human skin. These heads are not normal <laughs> with regards to that. So, if you're looking for those kinds of reviews, this is not the channel for that. I highly recommend that if you are looking for that kind of information, you actually seek out a review channel. Because sometimes they work well, sometimes they're going to be patchy and just not work at all. But... I think I'm going to start off with the Shimmer Coral Blush from the Ulta box that I got. And as always, if you want to have links to these products, again, I bought everything myself. Um, just let me know in the comments below and I will try to go back to all of my videos and put that information in just in case you are interested in any of these products, All right? And I'm just starting off with blush, and yes, I do go out of order on these, and I'm not going to go through every single cosmetic application, like on some heads, like this one in the deeper toned head. I don't have things like contour and bronzer that are deep enough to really show up on the skin, so I bypass that. <laughs> I'm just trying to brush away the extra powder. <sighs> there we go. I'm also a novice when it comes to makeup application, so do not <laughs> use what I'm doing in any sort of thought process of 
This is how you should apply cosmetics. I am not a booty guru. And on this head, I'm going to use the gold highlighter right here. And onto the actual meat of the video. Ninurta is also known as Ningirsu. And if I butcher any of these names, again, I am not a linguistics expert. <laughs> I'm just reading it off phonetically as best as I can. And Ninurta is an ancient Mesopotamian god associated with farming, healing, hunting, law, scribes, and war. And he was first worshipped in early Sumer. In the earliest records, he's a god of agriculture and healing who releases humans from sickness and the power of demons. In later times, in Mesopotam as Mesopotamia grew more militarized, he became a warrior deity though he retained many of his early ag earlier agricultural attributes. Sorry, I just am coming off of filming the much longer Lunar New Year video prior to this one, so I'm likely going to become tongue-tied and need water. <laughs> He was regarded as the son of the chief god Enlil, and his main um, religious center in Sumer was the Eshumesha Temple in Nippur. Again, if I'm butchering things, I am sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go in with the color Jade on the eyes from the So Jaded palette from Colourpop. <laughs> and he was also honored by King Gudea of Lag Lagash, who ruled from 2144 to 2124 BC. Um, later, Ninurta became beloved by the Assyrians as a formidable warrior. In spite of this, however, he continued to be seen as a healer and protector, and he was commonly invoked in spells to protect against demons, disease, and other dangers. Let's try and get this color to be a little bit more even if I can. really dipping into the color again and I might try a little bit of the color stoned in the crease to kind of deepen that a bit And I'll blend it out in a moment, so long as the uh, eyeshadow primer doesn't threaten to come off and completely ruin everything I'm trying to do right now. <laughs> I 
because it just tried in the last video I recorded. And I think in this region here, don't worry, I'm just laying down colors and then I will blend out in a moment. I'm going to do I think I'm going to put down the color Geodude. In this upper area. I know it's a very camouflage look right now, but I'm hoping to bring it together with some shimmer in a couple moments. And of course it matches the skin tone. I should have remembered that from earlier this week, <laughs> but it's okay. We will make it work. Um, Ninurta may have been the inspiration for the figure of Nimrod. I know many people right now are going, oh that's a mean name to call somebody, but no, actually it started off as a character name or a person's name and it means formidable hunter or sorry mighty hunter and at least was with lore I'm also going to put that color at this lower lash line just to try to blend out some of that white primer. <laughs> um, who was mentioned in association with Kalhu in the book of Genesis in the Bible. He may also be mentioned in the second book of Kings under the name Nishrok in the 19th century. Assyrian stone reliefs of winged eagle-headed figures from the temple of Ninurta at Kalhu were commonly but erroneously identified as Nisroks and they appear in works of fantasy literature from the time period. And that actually blended out quite nicely this time. Yay! Now are you going to behave the same way on the other eye? We will see. In the last video I just did, if you are watched the Lunar New Year video I literally just recorded. I had some difficulty getting the colors to blend because the eye primer started to come up and remove the colors I had just put down. Okay, it blended out a little bit. It's still a little harsh though. Let me keep blending a bit. I know real professional makeup artists are probably watching how I'm holding the brush and gasping for their lives <laughs> because I'm being too harsh, but I kind of need a um, stronger hand with blending the colors on these. In artistic representations, Ninurta is shown as a warrior carrying a bow, an arrow, and clutching a shirur, his magic talking mace. Interesting. Sort of, to a degree, reminds me of Thor, but his mace didn't talk. Or, uh, his axe mace. What 
Why did one go? Hammer. There we go. He sometimes has a set of wings raised upright, ready to attack in Babylonian art. He is often shown standing on the back of or riding a beast with the body of a lion and the tail of a scorpion. Ninurta remained closely associated with agricultural symbolism as late as the middle of the second millennium BC. And I'm just trying to think of what do I want to do here? Do I want to do smoky quartz? Do I want to do... You know what? I'm going to try something completely off base and not at all with this color scheme and try a bit of amethyst. And I know it sounds really weird, but... I'm trying to see... As I'm learning how things blend and look together, so the only way you learn is if you try. <sighs> and blend it up a bit. Trying to blend and layer colors. In artistic representations, I read that already, didn't I? Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, scroll down. There you go. Ninurta was believed to be the son of Enlil, and his mother is identified as the goddess Ninma whom he renamed Ninhursag, but in Angam Dima, okay, his mother is instead the goddess Ninlil. Under the name Ninurta, his wife is usually the goddess Gula, but as Ningirsu, his wife is the goddess Bao. So, this just goes along with, um, you know, kind of making me think of Roman and Grecian pantheons and how between the two, same deities have different names and um, affiliations as to who's married to whom and what each one does <laughs> to a degree. This eye doesn't want to layer down the color as well as the others, other one, so not working as well over here. And Gula was the goddess of healing and medicine. And she was sometimes alternatively said to be the wife of the god Pablisa, Pablisau, or the minor vegetation god Abu. Bao was worshipped mo almost exclusively in Lagash and was sometimes alternatively identified as the wife of the god Zababa. She and Nagirsu were believed to have two sons, the gods Igalima and Sul Sagana. Bao also had seven daughters, but Nagirsu was not claimed to be their father. Okay, I laid down some purple, I think. I'm going to top this with opal. Okay. 
just on the lid, of course, as long as my fingers don't spread it around like, of course, they're starting to do. Um, as the son of Enlil, Ninurta's siblings include Nana, Nergal, Nina Zhu, in Dilulu, and sometimes Inanna. I know, I'm reading these names off and you're wondering who on earth are these deities? I'll cover some of them as time goes on. Um, all I can say right now is please bear with me. Second only to the goddess Inanna, Ninurta probably appears in more myths than any other Mesopotamian deity. So he was a pretty big name in Mesopotamian culture in Sumeria. Um, and I may cover more about Ninurta in future videos, but where I'm covering more about Sumerian belief systems in tomorrow's video. The information I shared here may make a bit more sense after that. Um, scheduling wise, and scheduling content this week has been a bit of a complicated task this time around, so thank you for sticking with me through this video. Um, if it seemed a bit confusing, I don't blame you for feeling confused. Because I'm kind of right along there with you at the moment. Um, what can I do for a quick lip? Hmm. Let me think. Let's see. I really don't want to put the purple with the purple. I should have bought some other um, unique color lipsticks. That's a nude. It will kind of blend in. It's a nude gray. Yeah, screw it. Let's go for it. Merlot, it is from Gerard Cosmetics. Um, so anyway, thanks for kind of sticking with me through this video. I know it's likely not as informative or clear as some of my previous ones. But hopefully it will make a bit more sense after tomorrow's video. So if you're watching this one right now, you may want to re-watch it tomorrow after you watch my video on Sumerian theology. Because it might might make a little bit more sense at that time. So, yeah, I thank you for sticking with me through this video and my butchering all the names of the deities mentioned in it. Um, anyway, if you did enjoy this video, or have enjoyed my previous ones. Um, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell before you go. Ooh, I got that a little bit dark. There we go. And please be sure to let me know in the comments. 
I am open to constructive criticism and I am open to feedback. I do not bite. All I ask is that any comments be relayed respectfully. I tend to be one of those people who are have the mindset of treat others how you wish to be treated. Yeah. And I hope you return. I hope you let enjoy this video. I hope you will enjoy my previous and future videos and with all of that said until next time I wish you brightest blessings and blessed be